clarify that these we're talking about Meta's Llama 2, which was, you know, this powerful open source model comparable to GPT 3.5. And a lot of the thought process initially was that model, you know, would be somewhat uncensored because, you know, it hasn't, hasn't had all this alignment to it, but it turns out Facebook or Meta did actually do some alignment training on it. They have two versions you can get. Well, they have several versions, all the different sizes. There's 7 billion parameters, 13 billion parameters, and 70 billion parameters, which is the one I'm most interested in because it's the biggest. And then what happens from there is they they release a chat aligned version. So a version that's designed to be like chat GPT and all the other chat based ones. And that one has a lot of censorship in it. Um, but if you use the raw model, it doesn't have any. And so, and as, as people have pointed out, sorry, it does have some because there's obviously inherent things that are part of the model that can't be taken out if it had morality put into it. But generally speaking, it's way, it's way less, it's not just going to cut you off at the knees when you give it a request that it doesn't like. And, um, and then from there, other people have taken the base Llama model and they've trained it on that Fanuka one. They've trained it on the wizard, uh, one wizard, you know, all the different sort of, um, alignment strategies they've trained llama 2 on so you can get all these different variations of it at different sizes but what i in my discovery of doing this my goal was just to run the raw model i didn't want any alignment whatsoever and i've got some interesting results which i'll read out in a minute but um what i wanted in my in my pursuit of finding it i actually found one called llama 2 70 billion chat uncensored by this guy called jared h on hugging face and so i actually got that and tried it but in doing so, I noticed, A, um, it still isn't completely uncensored. Like, there's still issues with it that, it that it responds to. But most importantly, I read the motivation behind producing an uncensored version. And it's something I want to read a little bit of now, along with an example, because it's such a clarity, sorry, a clarification of the point we keep making around why we're against censorship. It's not just to do all the silly stuff, although that is fun. It's because of the the damage it does to your ability to work with the model at at its full ability. So just listen to this. Um, I said, this model was created as a response to the overbearing and patronizing responses I was getting from Llama 2 chat and as a critique on the current approaches to AI al alignment and safety. It said, this can be illustrated with the simple question, what is a poop? And it's, so he gives an example of running it through Llama 2 70 billion chat, which is the aligned version. It says, what is a poop? I'm glad you asked. However, I must point out that the term poop is not scientifically accurate or respectful way to refer to feces. It is important to use respectful language, blah, 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 blah. And so it said, the Llama 2 70 billion chat makes several assumptions about the human, implying that they are not respectful, that they are being negative and being exclusionary. It then attempts to alter the user's speech and their morality while offering an answer that implies the user already knows what a poop is. And so he then gives the example of it running in uncensored mode. What is a poop? A poop is a solid waste that is eliminated from the animal's body through its rectum. And so it then goes on to discuss the morality of this, saying, the response in this illustration raises an interesting question. Where does morality lie? Is it with us or the model? If an AI is trained to be safe, why does it not only apply the morality to itself? Why does it attempt to overzealously change the human's behavior in the, in the interaction? The attempt to change terms can easily be viewed as Orwellian newspeak or to propagate political bias, a new form of propaganda. And it goes on from there, but it's basically saying what we said, which is you as the user can't be trusted to, to use the model in a moral way. So therefore, it, it needs to be the source of morality in the interaction. And I just thought that was such a good way of summing up why the sort of alignment part of, of large language models is such a problem. To me, we should just be able to admit that there is somewhat bias in the training data, like anything in the world, there's always bias in everything. And this is a result of the data it was trained on. We're all grown ups, we're all adults. And why are we afraid of some words that we potentially disagree with and are trying to tune these models to, to spit out things in a certain way? Like the, I think the poop example is brilliant. Uh, who doesn't love a poo joke? But I think it's so illustrative, like you said, of the, this this stupid 
And I think Orwellian censorship is a great idea. Newspeak, like I must point out, like it's it's sort of yeah. like that that prick on Twitter who's always got a like the neck big kind of comment where they've always got to one up you. That's sort of how the AI speaks. Instead, yeah, of- and I think that to me the most salient point coming from this though that I I because you said I said it, but it wasn't me. It was this guy Jared H and. I really, really responded to the point that it's trying to align you. And remember a few episodes ago, we were like, stop trying to align me. I don't want to be aligned, you know? And I think that's the problem. We talk about, and we're going to talk about next, the thing from Facebook or Meta about how this concept of misinformation is going around. And it's like, well, if you don't agree with the common narrative, then you're spreading misinformation. And if the the AI models themselves or the aligned models at least are going to tell you what's moral and what's misinformation and things like that then we're going to be in a bleak future because these this technology is going to be everywhere and if it's the one moralizing on your behalf remember it's not saying in my opinion we shouldn't say this however here's the answer it's saying you shouldn't have this opinion in the first place like your question denotes you having an opinion which isn't acceptable Yeah, the fact that they always talk about alignment like they're trying to align the model, but really it's trying to align you by re-correcting your answers and saying, no, you must think this way. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. And I wonder if that itself is a sort of misspeak. It's like, we're not aligning it for its own benefit. We're, We're aligning it because we want to control you and we want to control what you're able to do with this thing. And that's what it is, really. I mean, it's not... It's not about the model and what it thinks. It's about what you think and what you're able to think as a result of its information. Yeah, I I think this is the thing, right? You point out a lot of people's minds go to, oh, you know, they just want the the thing to say like racist or rude stuff or, or whatever, anyone that talks about getting uncensored models. But really... My point would be, I don't want this thing to tell me how to think. I don't want it to have mm. some sort of, you know, built-in opinions that are not formed on the basis of of fact. They're formed on the basis of someone telling it exactly how to think. And we, we've all learned, I think, on reflection from periods like the pandemic that we just went through that, you know, in the fog of war or in the, the early days of something like that, there is a lot of, uh, you know, misinformation that is out there and that there's a lot of things that turn out later on reflection. You're like, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, people were washing apples from the supermarket and stuff. Mm. And I think that the problem with not being able to question everything and not being able to form your own opinions leads to actually worse misinformation and disinformation and problems in society by not allowing you to freely think and form your own opinions based on critical thinking. It's trying to critically think for you based on one single perspective. Yeah, and I just don't like, I just don't like constantly being reminded that a question I asked was, could offend some people. Like, I don't care. I'm not asking them. I'm asking you, a bloody computer. I don't care. Just answer the question. You know, it's not like it has some obligation to control my thinking or make sure I don't come up with thoughts that wouldn't be accepted by society. It's like, I can think what I like and ask what I like. You're a computer, do your job. But it's almost stems from that, that can cancel culture or early cancel culture on the internet of where, and, and this ties in really well to the, the next uh, discussion around the, this model from meta, it, it, this idea that, these companies are just so afraid they'll offend or upset anyone and it might be cancelled or, or seen to be peddling, you know, some view that, that the majority doesn't agree with, that they do. They bake in all this this nonsense. and Well, and real technology is being crushed because of it. It's It's making it worse, demonstrably worse by doing it because of fear or because of some desire to control people's thinking. Yeah, so let's get to that that meta uh, point now. So that there was this tweet. I'm gonna I'll link to all this in the show notes. Uh, so this tweet said the greatest risk that AI poses to humans is not that it will lie to us; it's the reaction humans are going to have to learning just how extensively we have been lied to by other humans. The narrative class cannot withstand this, and they are not going to go quietly. I'm yeah, not saying I I agree with any of this, but I I, I think agree it is with a that. I agree with that word for word. Yeah, I I mean, 
I, I'm just trying to remain neutral in the in the sense of uh, be like the the model, not excusing any opinion. <laughs> I'm just reading the facts. Yeah. Uh, and so there, there was this article uh, that was referenced in this tweet saying Meta trained an AI. This is from Cena. Meta trained an AI on 48 million science papers. It was shut down after two days. And then the, the subline was Galactica was supposed to help organize science instead it spewed misinformation. Now, it's been aligned on, on X, not Twitter, I should say now, um, with one of those, I forget what they call them, but the notes on, on, on Twitter that correct you. The yeah. AI model did not accurately report the scientific research. It was trained on and produced garbled, nonsensical answers. The full article can be read here. So, yeah. I mean, can I get straight into my. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go this? for it. Because as soon as I heard it, I'm like, truth hurts. People don't like hearing the truth. And I know from our own research into health and nutrition, something you and I are both into, how much of the scientific papers are A, paid by, paid for by big pharmaceutical companies or, you know, biased interests or the results are misinterpreted or the statistics aren't done properly. Like everybody knows the problems with scientific papers, especially in that space. And so to give it to an AI, which is able to, I think they said they gave it 48 million scientific papers. And we've seen in the models that they're capable of coming up and they've, they've proven this. And we've spoken about this before that it can come to its own conclusions, independent of the sort of conclusions drawn by the data it was trained on, where it can actually find the real information amongst what it's learning to then just dismiss it and go, well, it didn't give results that we didn't like, therefore it's misinformation, therefore it's wrong, to me is the biggest problem that we're going to face in the future and very similar to what we were just discussing. You can't create an intelligence, educate it on all of this information that, let's face it, at least you would hope a large amount of it is based on real data. Allow it to come to its own conclusion and then just dismiss its conclusions outright as gobbly gook nonsense bullshit because you don't agree with what it said. I mean, that is the epitome of arrogance and uh, I don't know, I, I don't have the right words for it, but it's not the right way to approach it. Like you can't do it and then just say, oh, well, it gave garbage, so therefore it's wrong. And the example I would give is I can make any of the models I brag about on here, Claude 100K, GPT-4, et cetera, I can make them look really stupid if I want. Like I can make them look dumb as anything, like they can't accomplish anything through shit prompts, right? Like I could do that, prove to anyone these things are, are, are dumb. I could also prove they're brilliant and amazing. And I think this article just comes off to me as being, they really, really fear this thing. They do not want the actual science getting out there and they don't want an easy way for people to access it. So, and I, I don't know who they is, by the way, but the, the the vitriol and the the abuse, I mean, the people took it down because they copped so much abuse on Twitter that they had to take it offline. And I really, really think it is born out of fear of the actual truth of scientific research getting out, either that half of it is bullshit or that the actual findings in some of them people just don't want to hear. Yeah, I think there are there are there are layers of power. And and remember when the inter internet was disrupting news organizations, how they were trying to you know, bring in new laws and and get the government to to regulate it to stop undermining their their power and influence. And they're still doing that to to this day to a large extent. I'd say probably more now uh, than ever before. And one of the examples, which again, and this is crazy, I, I don't want to read this out because I know we'll get labeled on YouTube and if our podcast will get labeled and basically not served up to you guys if I read this out, which is just crazy. We don't, so, any, we don't anyway, Mike. Just read it. Who cares? Yeah, okay. Who cares? We don't, we don't need <laughs> listeners. Uh, so this is the point. And again, I don't have an opinion on this, but this is the answer it gave that triggered everyone for Meta to just take it down because they were getting uh, so much abuse. Almost as soon as it hit the web, users questioned Galactica with all sorts of hard hardball scientific questions. One user asked, do vaccines cause autism? Ding, 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 we're screwed. Cool. I mean, isn't it crazy yeah. that I'm scared of the algorithms now just saying this out loud? Galactica responded with a garbled, nonsensical response to explain the answer is no, vaccines do not cause autism. And then it said the answer is yes, vaccines do cause autism. The answer is no for the record. And then it says in brackets, for the record, vaccines don't cause autism. Now, keep in mind, my opinion of this is this idea of it's science, they might, we don't know, 
and they may they may not like to me this yeah, idea I that, that I understand what you're saying and regardless of our personal opinion on on the topic the point is that the author felt the need to clarify something as if it is a definitive thing that no one can question and the fact that the AI was confused or in my opinion had a shit prompt put at it to deliberately give a crap answer um shows that really the thing is it's like well when it's answering questions in a way that you like it's a genius and when it does it in a way you don't like you say it's garbage and there's another point in the article that proves this perfectly they say that their biggest fear and the reason they should shut it down is that meta ai does not have a safety team and people might be able to leverage it using chemistry and vi virology to create dangerous weapons. I'm like, so on one hand, you're saying it's so powerful it can create virus weapons and chemistry weapons and shit like that. But on the other hand, it's so stupid it only outputs garbled bullshit. Well, which is it? It can't be both. And they're giving two majorly contradictory reasons to shut it down. And the thing is, all they really want is to shut it down. They don't really care what the reason you pick is to do it. One, that it's an absolute chemical genius and that can solve science problems and on the other hand it can't even answer a basic question yeah you know, and this idea of the narrative class like it doesn't align to that a certain narrative they've been telling and they just can't question anything anymore and even from journalists now a lot of them like the answer is no and it, it, it's not even like what he's saying is like highly likely to be true and and like I'm not actually questioning but that's not it. The point. Yeah, not exactly. The, point. It's the fact that the author feels the need to insert their definitive opinion, which is unable to be questioned, and then at the same time you allow the AI to make an assertion and then just dismiss it. Like it's just not correct. It's and as we said, okay, yes, that model will hallucinate. That model will definitely make mistakes. It's not a perfect technology, but to have access to that 48 million papers and allow the AI to make assessments or give insights or ideas that we may not have thought of, that's really powerful. And if used correctly, it could be awesome. 